Hello, weirdos! Welcome to the War Zone. I'm Scruffy, and this is Scruffy Tales. And we're gonna take a look at the Eye in the Sky, Birds of Prey, because Sweden has provided Ukraine with some nifty gadgets. So, to start things off, uh, no Gripen. Gripen will be delivered to Ukraine, for now at least. Uh, and the reason is the air defense coalition that supports Ukraine have asked Sweden to hold and let the countries who have promised to send F-16s to do so. And there may be some reason to this, uh, despite what conspiracy theories may uh, come up with. Uh, I will return to conspiracy theories at the end. But there may be some reasonable logic. And it would allow all available pilots and crew, etc., to focus on this one fighter. Logistics would focus on the demands of a single system. And it would make it simpler for the Ukrainian Air Force to integrate this new type of aircraft, new system, new way of thinking, new uh, missiles and what have you, into their uh, organization. So instead of just ramming everything in there as quick as possible, there is some logic to do it step by step. I mean, we gave them all manner of tanks and infantry fighting vehicles with different systems, different ammunition, different requirements, and just shoved it all to Ukraine. And that must have caused logistical issues for the Ukrainians. So I'm thinking with these expensive, more complicated uh, weapon systems, such as air aircraft, jet, jets, uh, maybe slow it down don't give them everything at once and uh, keep it simple and make sure that the f-16 becomes operational and then look at other systems which aircraft to provide next french swedish german whatever right I, I think there's some logic to it but not to worry i will be returning to um conspiracy theories later on or at least entertain some of them but there there is one big issue, I think, with this decision, even if it does make sense to some extent. And that is that Sweden is of the opinion that Ukraine is allowed to strike targets within Russia using Swedish weapons. That means if Sweden provides Gripen to Ukraine, Ukraine has aircraft that are allowed to attack targets within Russia, both on the ground and in the air. And by all accounts, the F-16s will only be allowed to attack targets within Ukraine. Uh, evidence for this is uh, Belgium stating quite clearly that the F-16s they are pro uh, providing may only attack targets within Ukraine and within Ukrainian airspace. So, that presents a bit of a problem, I think, for Ukraine. Had they received Gripen, they could have gone on the offensive and attacked uh, Russian supply depots, build up locations, or what have you, air bases and missile launchers within Russia that are at the moment out of reach. With the F-16s, they can only engage aircraft flying into Ukraine, which hardly happens, at least up in the north. And uh, they cannot engage missiles until they enter into Ukrainian airspace, uh, which is also a problem up north because there's no time to open fire on the missiles as they are flying into Ukraine and eventually landing on troops or Kharkiv. So I think Ukraine would very much have liked it to have received, received Gripen uh, because it would have given them offensive capabilities. But things are what they are. Uh, they will now receive F-16s and they will com completely focus on integrating the F-16 into their air force. But all that said, Saab does have an ace up its sleeve. Right, like 24 hours after Saab was told, nope, you're not gonna be sending Gripen to Ukraine. Saab went, ha! Well, we got other stuff to send. And they are now saying that they will provide Ukraine with the Saab 340 Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft. And this is a, an aircraft that carries a big massive radar on its back. And this radar can track ships, planes and missiles up to somewhere between 300 to 400 kilometers uh, at an altitude of 20,000 feet. 
And this aircraft, it does have a blind spot up front and to the rear, so that means the radar is aimed off to the sides in the direction of the wings, right? And it's a flying radar, essentially, like I said, uh, that can track incoming missiles, but can also track enemy aircraft. And by so doing, can guide friendly aircraft to intercept and engage hostile fighters. So it's kind of funny that when Sweden was told, no, you can't send your own fighters, Sweden sent aircraft that essentially will be in control of the F-16s and will guide them in the aerial combat. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a flipping the bird of, from Saab at uh, the rest of the uh, world providing F-16s. And here we can uh, we use the uh, deep state map to take a look at the range, the potential range of this radar system. Uh, 300 to 400 kilometers. As you can see, th this thing can look far into Russia. Keep an eye on all the aircraft in the air. Keep an eye on all the missiles launched, giving Ukraine early warning to what's going on if uh, russian aircraft are taking off if missiles are being launched these aircraft will see it as soon as the missiles are launched or as soon as the aircraft leave the ground but even though the range is impressive uh, russia do does have long range surface to air missiles that could in theory reach out and strike at these aircraft so it's not like you can just fly around and looking down on the battlefield going, Haha, you can't touch me. Uh, now, in theory, Russia does possess the, uh, uh, the capability to reach out and strike targets at these distances of 400 kilometers. So Ukraine still needs to be careful and they still need to have uh, uh, protection detail able to intercept incoming missiles should the Russians try and bring these down. And just to highlight just how important these aircraft these aircraft are uh, using very simple uh, graphics here. If this is a Ukrainian radar station and this is a Russian fighter, as you can see, if a Russian is low enough behind terrain features, he is essentially hidden from the radar. The Ukrainians can't see him. And if they can't see him, they can't shoot at him, right? That means the Russian will be able to get in this close before the Ukrainian radar spots him. And that is when they will call in their own aircraft or uh, alert their own surface air missiles to engage this target. So as you can imagine, if a Russian can hide behind terrain flying low, uh, he can get pretty close and launch his own weapons. And, you know, it's basically too late for the Ukrainians to uh, react to it. However, as you can see, if you have a radar way up here in the sky looking down, you can see uh, behind all the terrain features and you can spot the Russians coming at you from a very far uh, distance and you can alert your own fighters. You can put your SAM sites on high alert and everyone is ready to engage this aircraft. And potentially, if you launch surface to air missiles, um, you can also potentially in theory guide those missiles part of the way relying on the radar signals from these aircraft until the missile can rely on its own radar to lock on and engage the target and to complicate things further as we all know the earth is round and the earth has a curvature right which makes it increasingly difficult for ground-based radar to detect low-flying aircraft and this is why fighters and bombers and what have you in the modern age fly low. They hide behind terrain features and also rely on the curvature to uh, hide from ground-based radar. Even it's a bit extreme here, but you get the point. So again, when you have an, a radar system up in the sky looking down, you not only overcome uh, terrain features, you also overcome the curvature of the, uh, of the earth. So there, you. This is an incredible uh, addition to uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. This ability to 
look down from above and spot Russian uh, aircraft as early as possible. Meaning you have all the time in the world you need to launch fighters to intercept or get your SAM sites ready to fire and launch at these incoming uh, fighters. So yes, Sweden was not allowed to deploy or send uh, Gripen fighter jets to Ukraine, but uh, Sweden has deployed the next best thing. Uh, these flying radar systems, essentially, that will allow Ukraine to spot targets early on, and they can also help guide and direct F-16s in the combat as they're trying to intercept uh, fighters and missiles. And we know that Sweden quite recently uh, pledged a massive aid package to Ukraine, uh, promising massive amount of weapons, uh, monetary support, and all kinds of aid uh, over the course of three or four years, like a massive uh, uh, effort and commitment by Sweden. And then we found out that they weren't allowed to uh, send uh, you know, Gripen, and right after we learned that Saab is providing these flying radar systems. So, I mean, it's not unthinkable that the Sweden Sweden's plan was to send both of these systems as part of this massive aid package. So you would, uh, I mean, these two aircraft are essentially designed to perfectly work in tandem, right? They're designed to operate together. That, that is how you get the most out of both aircraft, even though the AWACS aircraft here, uh, the flying radar can still operate with other systems. But they are designed to work at maximum effect together. Uh, with each other. So it's not unreasonable to think that Sweden Sweden's plan was to deploy Gripen and the 340 and have them uh, work in tandem, striking targets within Russia, right? I think that was the plan. Uh, Sweden wanted to give these aircraft to Ukraine so that Ukraine could effectively take the fight to the Russian Air Force within Russia to effectively strike at ground targets within Russia. And now, uh, seems like it won't happen. Not yet, at least. I mean, if we begin seeing the F-16s having trouble uh, taking off from runways because Russia is going after them and uh, stuff like that, if the logistical side uh, doesn't work as the Ukrainians want because the F-16 requires 25 technicians to keep them operational compared to five or six when we're talking about the Gripen, uh, then maybe Gripen will be back on the table and the rest of the world will say, sure, send down Gripen because the F-16s are having issues. If that happens, then we'll probably see Gripen in Ukraine in a couple of months, maybe. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But I think this was the combination that Sweden was going for. And yeah, I mean, in a, it's kind of a douchebag move as well, because I think, I think Sweden wanted to push these planes in Ukraine in order to be able to sell them to everyone else. You know, you then Sweden could say, haha, take a look how awesome these things are when they're actually put in war. Uh, and then everyone would say, we want them. So that's not happening. And uh, so, But yeah, that's what I think was the big plan. But now Ukraine is still getting these very capable, very important flying radar systems. A long rant about theories and conspiracy theories. Uh, but it's not, all, not unthinkable, right? seems plausible at least that's it i hope you found it interesting and i hope i'll see you in the next one uh leave a comment what do you think is this a grand conspiracy that the other nations don't want to see gripen in ukraine maybe the united states uh, is hoping to sell f-16 to uh, other countries and doesn't want the gripen to become a major contender maybe it's all about the f-35s they don't want the next Gripen Echo, the E version, that's soon coming out to be a contender with the F-35. Ha ha ha, conspiracy theories galore. Uh, or, you know, was there uh, actual logistical, practical reasons why 
uh, they don't want Gripen in Ukraine and just want to focus on this one aircraft system, the F-16. Anyway, let me know, leave a comment and give me a thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, but enough of these uh, shenanigans. As always, go to Ukraine. Give them hell.